So Maybe, everything is lining up. We are in the end times. God said it was going to happen. Front page of the news. Jesus has come back. Everything's popping off right now. Whoa, whoa. Aliens are coming out. You know, angels. Watching the eclipse. And then all of a sudden he just starts walking across the water. Han meditation. All right, Kelly. So the eclipse is coming. Mm -hmm. And one of the craziest things about the eclipse that a lot of people don't know. Some people are saying this is actually going to mark. The start of the end times. Yeah. Which is like, whoa, whoa, well, what's going on here? People used to believe that back in the day that the that's what the eclipse is meant. Yeah. The mark of the end times. But so. an, another crazy thing is the eclipse is coming to where we live. So. Right <laughs> where we live. I'm not even exaggerating <laughs> at all. This is zero exaggeration. The best place that you can see the eclipse in the entire world is the exact precise location of the city that we are currently living in right here, right now at the exact park that we go to all the time. That is the best place in the world to see the eclipse. Another eclipse won't like won't happen like this in America for more than 40 years. And another eclipse won't happen in this location for another 400 plus years. Yes. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, once in a generational opportunity to see the eclipse and it's happening right here. Is this not the will of Allah and God bringing this to us, Kelly? <laughs> hey, I don't know. We'll see when it comes. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pop up a map for those of you looking because I heard about it coming here. We've been getting out. We know we've been receiving messages and news from, you know, our local city saying all these events are going on. They're like, you might want to stock up on food and water. So many people are going to be coming here. I'm like, is it really going to be that crazy? Because I remember in 2017, there was an eclipse. We went outside to look at yeah, it. Yeah, it was so basic. It wasn't that crazy. But of course, I did a little more research and there are levels to these things. So this one is a true full solar eclipse. Not only that, but it will last for four minutes, which is extremely rare. But if you look in the map here, you may have seen that far distance map of how it's going to travel across the United States. But as I zoomed in and I zoomed into our Cleveland area where we live and that little red line, the true exact middle path where it's going to go. And it is crossing over right over an actual beach, an actual beach park mm -hmm. right here. So it's like right there where people can come and gather and see it right there from the park. It's not like it's going over a woods. It's not like it's going over someone's backyard. Yeah, An the water, park. the Great Lakes, Lake Erie. So it's really incredible. And we're definitely not going to be wanting missing this one. But there's a lot of information and theories and conspiracy theories and a lot of things that people are saying about this one, which is really interesting. People were saying that it's going to be traveling over several cities called Nineveh, I believe it's mm -hmm. called. So we have a couple of videos to watch here. This one is first by Interstellar News, why the 2024 total eclipse will be special. And then we're going to watch a TikTok one, which is a little bit more into the conspiracy side. But this is more a bit more factual. On April 8th, you could have a chance at seeing something that many have never seen in their lifetime, a total solar eclipse. And this one is unique, so you really don't want to miss it. If you've never experienced one before, just take it from me, someone who has seen one, it is worth every single moment. But there are some things that you need to know if you want to properly experience this total eclipse that's coming up. So here are five things that you need to know before watching the total eclipse on April 8th. First, let's talk about where this thing is gonna be. Well, the 100% eclipse coverage area will hit land in Mazatlan, Mexico. It will make its way through Mexico up into Texas, passing right over major cities like Dallas. It will go up into the Midwest, going directly over Indianapolis and Cleveland, pushing up into the Northeast, going over cities like Buffalo and Syracuse, and then making its way up into Maine, and then eventually ending in Newfoundland. And that's just part of why this total eclipse is special, is the millions upon millions of people who will have the opportunity to see it. Now, don't get me wrong, total eclipses, they happen every couple of years, so they're not particularly uncommon.
also had these available. Fourth is if you are in that path of totality, the path where the sun is completely blocked out, you'll get to experience the total eclipse for over four minutes. This is nearly twice as long as the 2017 solar eclipse that I got to experience. But once the moon is fully in position to block out the sun, you are free to take off your protective glasses and look at the eclipse with your naked eye. Another reason why this total eclipse is special is our sun is approaching its solar maximum, a period of time where the sun is most active. So when the sun is fully eclipsed, you'll likely be treated to quite the dramatic view. You will get to observe the corona, the sun's upper atmosphere, in all of its glory. Again, with the sun being near its solar maximum, I fully expect an absolutely insane light show that will feel like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. However, pro tip, just look away from the eclipse about a minute before totality, take your protective glasses off, and then look around and watch how quickly the world goes from light mode to dark mode. It happens a lot faster than you think and it's a really cool experience. And the fifth and last thing that you need to know about the April 8th total eclipse is that it will be the last one in the contiguous United States until 2044 and 2045. So if you can make the trip, do it because you're not gonna be able to see another one for 20 years, at least in North America. And I know I did say five things that you need to know about this total eclipse, but here's a bonus one for you that I think is equally as important as all of the others. I mentioned it earlier in the video, but How the sheer amount of people who have the opportunity to see this incredible stellar event oh. is staggering. At a time where we all feel a lot now. of tensions mm -hmm. in the world, this gives so many a chance to come together and share a collective positive experience. A time where we can all just be humans doing uniquely human things, like coming together to watch a moon cast a huge shadow across the earth. Obviously from a scientific standpoint, I'm really- So that's pretty interesting. I mean, it just all goes to show how perfectly this universe is created that only God, only Allah could create. Because I always say all the time, if we were a smidge closer to the sun, we would burn up. If we were a smidge farther away from the sun, we would be freeze up. We are at the exact perfect distance to the sun to thrive. And think about it. The moon is so much smaller than the sun. And yet they have this perfect distance to us that even though they're vastly different sizes, from our point of view, they can perfectly match over each other to create an eclipse. I mean, yeah. it's incredible. They're totally different <laughs> sizes, and yet they will look like they're totally the exact match to create a eclipse. Yeah, if anybody thinks this is a coincidence, it's just absolutely out of control. I mean, this is just, it's going to be so cool to witness it and so awesome. And we are professional videographers and photographers, so we are actually going to be doing a full-time blog, vlog, not yes. blog, vlog, for the channel mm -hmm. that's actually going to be a high quality. We did one where we got the Quran. That was actually just like a spur of the moment on our phone. Yeah, We're actually going to do a professional video. one with our professional video gear and drones and all that cool stuff so that you guys can actually see it. Yeah. for what it is so we're gonna have our cameras out we're gonna have everything out we're gonna show the process of it and it's gonna be so cool so that's something that you guys can definitely stay tuned and really want to just you, you you're gonna want to see this this is gonna be really awesome and we are just so happy that we can do higher quality content now because a lot of the time it was like we've been doing youtube for four years and the whole time it was like we're doing these videos. No one's really watching our videos. Yeah. So a lot of times whenever no one's watching it, we are trying to put out the highest quality content that yeah, we could. Regardless. Sometimes it was like, yo, this sucks. <laughs> but you have to get it's a trial and error process. You're learning still. You're yeah. still learning how to do it. And I know a lot of people did say they wanted to get some kind of. I don't know. We told people, hey, we're this is what we do and we can teach people. And people did seem interested in maybe us in like a course or some kind of event in which they could truly see and learn how to be videographers and digital marketers mm -hmm. and learn how to do it for themselves. So we would be interested in doing something like that, too. But yeah, uh, it's just going to be such a fun experience. Stuff. And I am very grateful to be a part of this whole journey. And you guys are watching us and seeing us grow. 
And the more we do it, the more we understand, the more we expand, the more knowledge that we get throughout the whole process. And I just keep saying it because it's like if you share our content with someone, if you share any video about God, about spirituality, about the true one God, then that is going to help someone's life for generations to come because you never really understand what someone is going through. And if someone sees that video, that could truly change their perspective forever and generations of their family. Yeah, 100%. We're all about having people just know what it's like to be with God and Allah and just understand that because we know firsthand the absolute incredible power, life-changing power when you have that relationship. So that's why we're here. We just want to help as many people as we can. Yeah, for sure. So that was kind of some more factual stuff about the eclipse. Again, people are getting spooky out here oh, there's yeah. some conspiratorial things going on with the eclipse so let's see what's going around on the internet what people have to say about this one this video is for you if you want to understand why religious people feel a certain way about the upcoming solar eclipse i'm not going to waste your time i'm just going to get right into it now people on both sides of religion the ones who worship good and the ones who worship evil pay attention to the moon here because they understand that those are signs now the people that most consider worship evil they tend to lean toward this one right here. But this one, the solar eclipse, doesn't happen very often. The last one here was in 2017, but the one before that was in 1979. So the fact that we're getting them more and more frequently is standing out to a lot of religious people. Time to get into the meat and potatoes. Those religious people went to the book of Revelation because they and a lot of others, even non-religious people, feel like it could be the end of the world. Here's what they noticed, and it gets more interesting the further into it you get. These are the last three paths of totality for the last three solar eclipses that were in the US. This one right here is the one we're about to get. God says in the book of Revelations, I am the Aleph and the Toph, which are the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now with that in mind, if you look at the map here, you can see the Aleph and the Toph. So is this God? Is this a sign from God? And that's still not it. Here's another passage talking about God's return. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not provide its light. Sounds a little bit like a solar eclipse, right? Back to it. The stars will fall from the skies and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Well, NASA posted that this is going to be one of the only eclipses that we could see a large eruption of solar material falling stars. Another thing to consider here is that in the Bible, God said it would be about 2,000 years before his return. We are currently in the year 2024. Now, a lot of people in today's generation, that's not enough. They need more. Well, God actually spoke on that too. He answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation, which sounds way too much like us, craves for a sign and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. So who's Jonah the prophet? What's his story? Well, Jonah was tasked by God to go to a city called Nineveh where he was going to preach the word to the people of that city and save them. Jonah did not want to do that. Jonah decided to go west and run. He went through his tribulation and then still ended up in the city of Nineveh. What's unique about that is the solar eclipse we're about to get passes over eight cities called Nineveh. If you draw a line through all of those cities, you can tell that it passes right under Michigan. The same exact way the solar eclipse we're about to get does. This is how the Bible explains God's second coming. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. <laughs> Pay attention specifically to the he is coming with the clouds, because we are expecting a historical chance of cloud coverage during the eclipse. Those are not the only things. There's plenty of other things referencing the end times that are currently happening, and I'll bullet point them for you. What's extremely specific is that God says the Euphrates River will dry up in the end times. And I hate to say it, but the Euphrates River just recently dried up, guys. He said we were going to get hit by pandemics, and well, has anyone heard of COVID? I heard of the Bible yeah. also Me says too. that in the end days, the Jews will build a third temple and sacrifice a red cow, which will then usher in the Antichrist, whom they think is the Messiah. Well, they just announced the construction of a third temple, and Texas is sending them red cows to sacrifice. I personally believe that there's way too many coincidences regarding this solar eclipse. But I really do think that we are in the, the end times. 
Honestly, I think so too. And I don't know. That's just one of my little, I guess, fascinations. I'm Kooky really side. yeah. That like that might be I going full really coup, love but. the revelations and the end times and like going down that rabbit hole. I think it's completely fascinating and i don't you know attach too much to it and and start getting paranoid and trying to look for all these signs it's just one of those things where you just look up stuff on the internet every now and again because it's just a really interesting topic in my opinion oh for sure and i i love i just reread the revelations chapter all that imagery and symbolism and numerology in there it's just so cool to decipher it and it's one of those you know, tricky situations because it's like, okay, what what if this is like a self fulfilling prophecy? You know what I mean? So it's like these people all see it, we all can go there and read it, what it says. And I know that the Quran has another has a chapter about the end times as well, and I really want to read that one so I can kind of do like a cross. Maybe we should comparison. just do that like tonight or right. Like, I don't know. Almost don't even really believe in self fulfilling prophecies. If it's a thing where they haven't opened up a temple in a long time and then every time they open up a temple, they send red cows and they're just doing what they normally do. So Maybe. everything is lining up. We are in the end times. God said it was going to happen. So what's the problem? You know what I mean? That's what I think. It's like, you know, this is what God said is going to happen. And I believe it is going to happen because it's all happening now. That's why it's so exciting to be where we are now, because now is the time where it's all happening. I mean, really think about how crazy that would be. We're all chilling. Next thing you know, it's front page of the news. Jesus has come back. He came back. Everything's popping off right now. Whoa, whoa. We're looking around. Okay, you know, this is happening. That's happening. It's really the end time stuff's getting <laughs> aliens are coming on, you know, angels. I mean, that would just be so I cool really wonder how Jesus would come back like. Are we just going to be chilling there on the beach, watching the eclipse, and then all of a sudden he just starts walking across the water of the lake? <laughs> I mean, that would be insane. Or, like, how would he come in? Like, this is something to, interesting to think about, you know? Like, would he just pop in on some water and start walking across the water? Would he just descend from the Watch sky? Watch your arms, dude. <laughs> um, I don't know how he would come in. It's interesting in, to think about. It would be. Would he be born? Can I again? talk, please? My, can I talk, please? I mean, holy, I, edit, I, I don't know if you got like too much coffee today or something. Like, what is wrong with you today? Probably. Yeah, relax, dude. Did you drink coffee today? Two. Yeah, you need to chill, dude. Like seriously, <laughs> I don't like when Kelly drinks coffee, dude. To me, it's it's haram. It's not. You can't just make up what's haram. haram Drinking is- coffee during Ramadan. <laughs> Exactly. It's haram. <laughs> but guys, yeah, it's uh, we're having so much fun learning all this information with you guys because it really is fun. And we joke around a lot. So don't always think we're being so serious and because we're really not like serious people. Whenever it comes to God, we are serious. But whenever we're just joking around and having fun, like we really are just having fun. Teasing. And that's really is what it's about. But this I, is how he flirts. <laughs> By being mean? Yeah, I guess so. (laughs) Right now is a time where we did a long meditation last week. And during that, or was that last week? That was this week. We did a long meditation and I was getting a lot of messages from God and uh, Jesus. And it was really fun. And one of the things that I was getting is now is really a time for perfection and perfecting the things that, that are in your life. That shouldn't be there. And I did something where I talked about Ramadan and what it means to us and how it really is a time where you can just perfect and get people out of your life that don't need to be there. Get food out of your life that doesn't need to be there. Get situations out of your life that do not need to be there. And it's a fun and enjoyable experience. And we've had a lot of fun and we been celebrating with our friends that are Muslim. We've been having days where they come over and then we break the fast together. So we've been and we're still new to Ramadan. So just please give us a break. I know Kelly broke the fast with the coffee. Just let her relax and get it. Get a little break going. Mm-hmm. But. Did you break it today? Yeah, I drink water, you know, and uh, and maybe a crumb of bread slipped in my mouth. Are you serious? But Yeah, maybe just a crumb. <laughs> but 
but we've been very good with it and doing a good job with it. And it does get easier over time. Yeah. So we're joking around, but it does get easier over time. And we, I do enjoy it. And you feel so skinny when you wake up as well. So it's one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah. And doesn't Ramadan end during the eclipse or something? Let's see. When is I was looking that up. Eid is. Da, 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 da. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe people in the Eid comments can tell us. Eid is the ninth and oh, the okay. eclipse is, is the eighth. eighth. So that's when it ends. Yeah. So the ninth is the last day. Yeah. Uh, well, the eighth is the last. Uh, day. You guys got to tell us. You guys, <laughs> please tell us in the comments. Play this at the, the beginning eighth, of the I think podcast. The eighth is the last. You day. guys, is the last day of Ramadan the eighth or the ninth? Because the eclipse is on the eighth, and if that's the case, wow. You no, know that's, what I mean? That's something. Because Islam is like we didn't even realize when we first started learning about it, but it's so connected to the moon that it's just been mm. such a cool experience. And Kelly loves yeah, the moon yeah. and astrology and all that. Because the eclipse will be a new moon. It has to be for the eclipse. So yeah. the, you know, the crescent will be the last part. So I think the last day is the eighth. So that's really interesting. It really, really is. Yeah, we need to just correct us if we're wrong. But I think it is the last day. And, you know, another so. thing going on the day of the eclipse is CERN. I don't know if you guys are familiar with CERN. They're this huge company that they invented the Internet. And... They have this huge machine that they mess with all the time. A lot of people like to accredit them for being the reason for if you guys ever heard of what's it called where all those phrases and changes happen and everybody's memory is one thing, but it changes the. Uh, oh, you're talking about the. Uh, what is it called? It's like the uh, or the, or the Berenstein Bears. Yeah, and the Berenstein and the, Bears and the. Luke it's called the Mandela effect, right? Mandela. That's correct. So. They have this like, I don't know very much about it, but some kind of huge machine and that it can mess with like time and it's really weird. And by the way, outside of their corporation, they have Shiva, the uh, god of destruction. Kind of weird. Wait, what is this? This is CERN, C-E-R-N. And who is CERN? There's, there's this huge company. They created the Internet. Hmm. Interesting, and but there's also they're going to be messing with the machine on uh, the eclipse. Messing with what machine? It's just this machine that they have. It's like this huge, big machine, and people say it can like warp time and all this stuff. So that's why people say that. Oh, they, you're talking about the particle accelerator. The, yeah, the accelerator. Saying, oh, they it. have this machine that they're going to be messing <laughs> with. They created it. I'm like, what are you talking? About? But um. I do want to thank people for donating to you. All of your comments, you guys that leave the comments and donations. Thank you so much for doing that. And I want to thank uh, Sammy Al Huas and then XOXO. Sammy donated a hundred dollars. XOXO donated three dollars. So, so I do have to thank you guys for donating to the channel because I always say it, but we've done this for four years without getting any money at all. So now that when we see a donation, it really touches our heart and really helps us a lot because we invested so much money into it i mean i built an entire computer just for this setup two professional microphones we have more in here we have four professional microphones we have two professional cameras that we keep in here we have a teleprompter in here that we don't use but we have it we have professional lighting in here i have a monitor in here we have stream deck the a10 mini pro we have a sound deck we have just ssds we have so much stuff and all the decorations that came into part of this all this stuff is because we wanted to have a professional setup and we knew eventually that god would lead us to really start to speak upon god and help people and we didn't know that this is where our journey was going to go but since it's gone here it's been the most beautiful and fun journey that we could ever experience yeah and us not having any expectations or a hint of knowing how this would all unfold makes it more fun and exciting because whenever that happens and it works out perfectly without you ever imagining how it would go, you always know that that means it came straight from God, straight from Allah. So it's truly just the most beautiful thing. And in life, you just do your part, whatever your passion is telling you, your heart is telling you what you feel inside. And of course, do what you know is right to be a good human person on this earth and follow what you feel is your purpose to the best of you that you can 
And then God will take care of the rest and make things unfold for you in such beautiful ways that we can never make it happen that way on our own, nor would we want to, because again, it'd be less exciting, less fun, less remarkable. And the best part is, is we know we're still at the very tip beginning of this journey. So we're just so excited. And, you know, last time, the last episode, we did some Q&A and we've been talking and. Oh, yeah. You Do know, we have any more questions? There were some more questions. Yes, that we didn't cover. So maybe we'll try to get into some more of those right now. But by the way, you know, we've been we'll talking. We're thinking about right. having, you know, if you guys ever want to send in a question more like advice style or maybe we can even set up some kind of way where we can chat together, you know, live on our videos where. Whatever you want to discuss, if you literally want to come here, like a Zoom call situation, speak with us, discuss together. Yeah, if you guys want to see us do lives, we will do lives. We just set up the StreamYard stuff, so we're going to start doing lives on here. If you guys want to see that, let us know. Mm -hmm. And so I do remember one of the questions. Someone was saying, in one video or something like you kept saying crazy and i think it might just get interpreted in the wrong way perhaps like language barrier and things i'm not sure but when we are watching a video and our reaction is oh that's so crazy that's so crazy it's not in a bad way it's just essentially we're just saying that's remarkable that's unbelievable and it's in a positive way oh yeah so we're not saying sure. oh that's crazy get out of here that no that doesn't make no we're saying that's it's mind blowing. That's yeah, like mind blowing. That like that's insane. Like if I saw something really quick, like that's crazy. Dude. Yeah, that's insane. Like exactly. Like you went wild. I don't mean you're actually a wild right. person or anything. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people are, are new to English too, and a lot of people speak multiple languages, so they might not understand. So that's ab- actually a uh, valid thing to say, and I'm glad that you brought that up, Kelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just remembered that one. So shall I look through more? Or no. Uh, let's do more later. Okay. We've been doing a lot of work, guys. We just wanted to kind of tap in and talk about the clips and let you know what's been going on. And Kelly's been driving me crazy today. So, <laughs> and she's going to have to edit this video. So, and these are the new wheels I got in my car yesterday. So, if you guys wanted to see it, you know, I just got some new wheels looks like in my a car. Hot and wheel, so, if you're yep, looks like a Hot Wheels car. My friend was like, he's like, it looks like a car from Rocket League. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, guys, we're so excited and we love you guys so much. We'll absolutely keep it going for you. We just wanted to touch base a little bit with you guys and see where you're at. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. See you in the next episode.